This mid-range i5 from 2012 only has four threads thanks to its lack of hyper-threading which was pretty much exclusive for the i7s and Xeons at the time. But back then this wasn't really that much of an issue as multi-threading past four threads wasn't really a thing for gaming back then as this was five years before Ryzen landed on the scene. Like the rest of the Ivy Bridge third generation CPUs, the i5-3470 features the brand new at the time PCIe 3.0 standard, so if you've got an 8x graphics card like the RX 5500 XT, your gaming performance might just be saved by that little feature right there. Other improvements over Sandy Bridge include a drop to the 22 nanometer processor down from 32 nanometers, making Ivy Bridge chips more efficient, an improved memory controller, which unfortunately didn't seem to be the case today, but more on that in a bit, and slightly higher base and boost clocks on Ivy Bridge CPUs, which is always nice as that leads to more performance. So is modern gaming possible on a 12 year old four thread processor or should you just totally skip this and get something newer? To find out the i5-3470's performance, I've decided to put it into a testing PC which has 16 gigabytes of dual rank, dual channel DDR3 memory, which is unfortunately running at 1333 megahertz. I did try enabling XMP at 1600 megahertz, but this resulted in a lot of blue screens. So 1333 megahertz will have to do today. For my testing today, I've disabled the Spectrum meltdown mitigations as these do impact performance and on a CPU as old as this, you want as much performance as possible. For testing, I have used the RX Vega 56 which should be able to extract every ounce of performance out of the i5-3470 and the resolution tested today is 1080p. For comparison purposes to see how much performance you might be losing, I've decided to test it against my i5-12400F which is a modern-ish i5 and it shouldn't bottleneck the RX Vega 56. So this will show how much performance you're losing. So let's see how this i5-12400F gets on. Starting off the gaming benchmarks today with Fortnite and as always with my CPU testing I like to use DirectX 12 and I do believe that is the best API for this game. However, the i5-3470 got just 106 FPS on average and the 1% low wasn't looking particularly brilliant at just 42 frames per second. Compared to the i5-12400F, this is a loss of about 49% performance on average as that got 206 FPS with a 1% low of 154. So the 1% low is looking way better with the modern i5 and this is something that I was expecting. But if you just wanted to play Fortnite casually, I mean the i5-3470 is certainly playable. Next game up is Counter Strike 2 and this game does give old processors a big run for their money. Setting it to the low preset and disabling FSR netted just 80 FPS on average on the i5 with a 1% low of 48 FPS. The 1% lows are looking better in Counter Strike 2 recently in my CPU testing so Valve must have done some updates to improve the stability. But comparing it to the modern i5-12400F and there is 68% performance being left on the table on average. That is because the i5-12400F got 253 FPS with a 1% low of 115 frames per second. So if you want to play Counter Strike 2 competitively, I highly recommend a more modern processor. God of War on the high preset is playable on both of these systems as they both got above 60 FPS. And the old i5 is leaving just 27% performance on the table with the average frame rate as that got 60 FPS on average and the i5 12400F got 82 FPS on average. The big difference between both these systems is the 1% lows as yes the i5 12400F got almost double the 1% low of the old i5 so if you really don't like stuttering in your games I highly recommend a more modern processor. F123 on the medium preset doesn't really seem to be that CPU demanding. This is because the old i5 trails the 12400F by just 19% with the average frame rates as it got 100 FPS on average and the i5-12400F got 124 FPS on average. This is pretty decent performance on both these processors and the 1% low was also looking pretty good with the old i5 getting 62 FPS there, but the newer 12400F got 103. So if you really wanted to play F1 on an older CPU like this, it's more than playable. 
as we've seen from previous videos before, Cyberpunk 2077 on the lower preset really isn't that CPU intensive at all. And even older third gen i5s like this do put out a playable experience. The biggest difference between both of these processors though is the 1% low as the i5 12400F got 38 FPS for the 1% low whereas the 3470 got just 29. This means there are less dips and stutters on the modern i5 and this might be something you want to look out for. Rainbow Six Siege was good enough for a 144Hz experience on the medium preset on both of these CPUs. However, the modern i5 12400F is good enough for a 240Hz experience. And this is sort of the frame rate that you might be losing with an older processor like this. So if you really want to play Rainbow Six Siege very competitively, a modern CPU will help you out in this game as you can get 285 FPS on average compared to 171 FPS, which the i5 3470 got. So if you want to play games like Rainbow Six Siege very competitively, you're going to want a powerful CPU. For some reason in Novigrad, The Witcher 3 is a very, very CPU intensive game and it actually saw the second biggest performance delta between both of the processors tested today. That is because on the high preset, the i5-3470 got just 37 FPS on average with a very lackluster 18 FPS for the 1% low. The i5-12400 F sees a way more playable experience with 104 FPS on average and the 1% low is also looking way better getting 65 FPS so yes I can't really recommend an older processor like the i5-3470 in a game like The Witcher 3 as it is just so CPU demanding. Marvel Spider-Man Remastered is actually optimised quite well, however, I think you need a little more than 4 threads in this game. That is because the 4 threaded i5 got 52 FPS on average with a 1% low of 29, which I mean is playable performance, however, you might want a bit more than this. Looking at the 12400F's performance, and it almost doubles the average frame rate going up to 103, and the 1% low more than doubles going up to 63. So the average FPS is better and the 1% low is also way better in Spider-Man Remastered with the modern i5. But to be fair, in a big open world like this, this is something I was expecting. To be fair, on this four threaded 12 year old processor, I would say pretty much every game tested today was pretty playable. Yes, The Witcher 3 was yeah, yeah, it lost a lot of performance compared to the 12400F, but in games like Rainbow Six Siege and even Cyberpunk 2077, it wasn't really losing that much performance to the i5 12400F, and I would consider them games to be quite playable. And that brings me on to the performance deltas, and you are losing about 46% and 54% for the average and 1% lows respectively, but for some people, that's okay and truth be known if you were to use a gpu like the rx 580 or rx 570 something along those lines the performance delta would be even less with them gpus and you could even get a very budget gaming pc right there if you just wanted to play sort of esports titles but there's one specific esports game which i would not recommend playing on this and that is counter strike 2. yes the performance was playable getting about 80 fps on average However, if you've got a 144Hz monitor, you're going to want at least 120 FPS in this game. That is because Counter-Strike 2 is just insanely competitive and you're going to want as many frames as possible with as little dips as possible. And that's why I'd recommend a much more modern processor. But judging by Rambo Six Siege's performance, I suspect a lot of other esports titles would perform totally fine. I'm looking at the Valorant and the League of Legends. They will run fine on a processor like this. So if you wanted a very cheap way of just building a gaming PC, I'd recommend getting an old HP or Dell machine, putting an RX 580 in there, calling it a day because you're going to be getting excellent 1080p performance in titles like that. And of course, if Rainbow Six Siege runs fine, games like Minecraft and Roblox are going to run perfectly on a machine like this. As I said at the start of this video, the i5-3470 is often found in old office machines like Dells and HPs, and this makes it an incredibly accessible processor. These machines will sell for around 50 to about 70 pounds on the used market, and that includes the power supply, the motherboard, the processor, the case, and 
maybe an SSD, which is like 250 gigs or something along those lines. And all you need to do is just put in a graphics card, something like an RX 580 or RX 570, will work perfectly fine for a system like this. And that's the only recommendation I can make for a processor like this. Don't go out and buy it separately and build a PC from scratch. Get it in an old office machine. PC builders like me know that old office machines like this pack incredible value. As long as you whack a competent GPU like an RX 580 or an RX 570 in there, you're onto a budget 1080p winner and it's incredibly affordable as well. It shouldn't cost any more than like £150 or $150 depending on where you live. So if you want to see a bit of a PC upgrade series, let me know by commenting that down in the comments below. Right then, that brings me on to the end of the video. Don't buy this CPU separately. Get it in an old office machine would be my recommendation. But to be fair, I am pretty surprised by how well, all things considered, this CPU performs in 2024. I was expecting it just to not even start games like Spider-Man Remastered. However, it ran them, I wouldn't say totally fine, but it ran them pretty decently, all things considered, even with a GPU which I would consider to be a bit too powerful for it. So, as I've said like 500 times in this video, the RX 580 is the most powerful GPU I'd recommend with a processor like this. Also, AMD cards do have less driver overhead as well, so they're a bit easier on the CPU. So with that being said, there are two other CPU benchmarking videos right there, which might be right up your alley. And if you got this far into the video, I'd like to say thank you for sticking around this long. And if you really like the video, consider subscribing and leaving a like. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one and I hope you have a good rest of your day.